Okay, let's see how to get started with MongoDB with Docker. So instead of actually installing MongoDB on our computer, we're going to install everything on a Docker container. And this way will not pollute our operating system. And it also will be easier to transfer the database to another person if you want to do it down the line. So let's get started by opening Docker. And this is a new installation of Docker, so I don't have any containers and I also don't have any images yet. So first we're going to look for the Mongo image. And it's very simple. All we need to do is click here and then look for Mongo because this is the image that we want. And the first result is the one we want where it says Mongo. And you can see that it has a lot of downloads. And all we need to do is click here where it says Pool. By the way, we can do the very same thing by clicking here. And it will copy this text. And then we can open the terminal and paste it here. So doing it from the terminal or just Clicking on pull will achieve the same thing. I do it from the UI. So pull. And the Mongo image is being downloaded. It won't take very long. Great. And the image was downloaded. So let's click anywhere else. And you can see that now we have this image Mongo. It says it here. By the way, we still don't have any containers, but we do have our image. And now we can create a container from this image. To do that, I'll click here on the play button where it says run and let's open optional settings and here I'm only going to do one thing I'm going to forward a port forwarding a port will allow us to use a local port a port that's on our host machine to a port that's on the container okay this way we can access a local port a port that we do have access to and docker will forward any requests to this port to the mapped port within the container now, as for the container, we have to use this port because this is the port that MongoDB uses. But about the port on our local machine, we can choose basically any port we want, as long as it's not used yet. I'm just going to use the same port for my local machine as well. So I'll copy this one and paste it here. Now, I know that many people prefer to use some other port in case they have a local installation of MongoDB. So if you do have a local installation of MongoDB and you're using this kind of mapping, one of them will be hidden because both of them are trying to use the same port. Of course, it's not possible. But since I know for sure that I don't have a local installation of MongoDB, it should be okay. And that's what I'll go with. And to create our container and start it, let's click on Run. And you can see some logs. Now, just to make sure that everything is up and running and to make sure that our port mapping is working as expected, we can click here to open this link on the web browser. And we get this message. It doesn't mean anything. Of course, we don't have anything to do with it, but we know that MongoDB is there and we can connect to it. To actually do anything useful with a MongoDB installation, we need some kind of client. There are many available options and maybe the most popular one is Compass. Compass is the client offered by MongoDB themselves and you can use it if you want. But for this demonstration, I just use Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code has an extension for MongoDB and it can serve as a very reasonable MongoDB client. So that's what I'll do. So let's open Visual Studio Code and let's open the extensions. And here I look for Mongo. And the first option is the one we want by MongoDB themselves. So let's install this extension. And it was installed. And you can see that we got a new icon here, the MongoDB icon. So let's close this page. And if we now open the MongoDB extension, we can add a connection. So let's click on connect. And here we need to provide the connection string. Now the connection string always starts with MongoDB and then colon forward slash forward slash. Then we need to specify the host. In our case, the host is localhost because the MongoDB server is running on this computer, not on some remote computer. So localhost. And then we need to specify the port that MongoDB is using. Now, if you don't remember the exact number of the port, we can get back here to Docker and click on Inspect. And if we scroll down, we can see the port over here. So I'll copy it and paste it as part of the connection string. So let's press Enter. And we can see that we got a green leaf. And this green leaf means that we successfully connected to the MongoDB server. So let's expand the server. And here we can see the databases that we currently have. Let's create a new database, a database of our own. So we're going to create both a database and a collection in this database. Let's give some name to the database and the collection. 
So let's say that it's going to be a database for a grocery store. And let's call the collection products. And then we can click here to run this query and create the database. And we got OK, which means that the database was created. And if we refresh it, we can see it over here, the new database, grocery store. And if we expand the database, we can see the collection itself, products. So we can see that currently we don't have any documents in this collection. So if we expand it, we don't get anything here. But now we can easily add documents to this collection. So to add a new document, I'll right click here and insert document. And let's say that the first document that I want to add to my products collection is Apple. And let's also give it a price. And let's close this response. And now we can run this query. And it should add the new document to the collection. So let's run it. And we got the ID that was generated for the new document. And if we refresh this view, we can see that we now do have a document over here. And if we click on it, we can see the document itself. Now, this is all working great. But it does have one drawback. If now, for any reason, we have to terminate, we have to remove this container, so let's try to do it. So let's disconnect from the container that's currently running. And let's get back to Docker. So if I now stop and remove the container, and if I now create a new container that's based on the MongoDB image, I can connect to it, of course. But since this is a new container, it's like having a new server, which means that any of the data that we had before is not going to be here. It's a clean slate. It has nothing stored in it. So if we open it, we can see that we don't have our database anymore. Luckily, there is a simple solution to it, and that's using volumes. So let's see how we can do that. So first, let's disconnect from this container. And let's also stop and remove this one. And here's how we're going to do it. So let's create a new container. But this time, in the optional settings, in addition to specifying the port that we're going to use, we're also going to define a volume. A volume is a folder on our local machine that the container can use. This way, whenever we stop or remove the container, we don't lose any of the data because the data is actually stored on the local computer, not on the container. So when defining a volume, we have to define two things. First, we have to define the folder in the local computer, and that's where the data itself will be saved. And then we need to define the folder within the container. Now, they will be linked. And this way, the container will have access to data that's actually stored on the local computer, not on the container itself. So here on volumes, I'm going to choose the host path, and I just call it MongoDB volume. Here it is. And as for the container, the path has to be forward slash data forward slash DB. The actual files that are used by the MongoDB container are stored here. Saving the data in this folder means that we're saving everything that the database needs, everything that the database uses. So let's run this container. And if we now click on inspect and scroll down, we can see under amounts the volume that we just added. So this is the local folder, MongoDB volume. That's on the C drive of the computer. And this is the folder on the container itself. So let's get back to Visual Studio Code. And let's connect to the container. And again, I'll create my database and the collection just like we had before. So let's add the document to the container. Now, since we used a volume, we can stop this container and we can also remove it. So let's do that.
and we can create a new container. But this time we will use the same folder as a volume. This means that the new container will not start fresh. It will not be empty, but it will have access to all of the data that the previous container created before. So all of our databases and collections will be in the new container. It uses the same data. So let's create this new container. And notice that for the host path, for the volume, I'm going to use the same folder. And for the container path, I always have to use forward slash data, forward slash db. And let's run the new container. And if we connect to this new container, we can see our database and the collection within it, just as we had before. 